The following is a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. For more information, please visit our website at www.dallasgenealogy.org. All right. Well, it is 11 o'clock and then some, so I think we had better get started and get this meeting on its way because we've got a lot to cover. Not there yet. Let's start there. So I am Tony Hansen. It is what Saturday, April first. It is April Fools. I have no April Fools joke. So if I, you laugh at anything, it's it's really serious. So I, I just couldn't think of a good one that would really fool you. So I didn't mess with that. Uh, let's see. You didn't have to pay for parking, so never mind that. Previous meeting minutes have been posted, distributed, and all good things. So unless there are any additions, changes, or corrections, we'll just accept those as written. Thank you, Sharon. We are running still our Bring a Guest contest. The way it works is you bring a guest, register them with Gloria, and next month, in fact, we're going to have a drawing for everybody that brought a guest, and one lucky winner is going to get a free entry to uh, one of our seminars next year. So you want to take advantage of that. Gloria reports that we have a quorum. We have 29 members and two guests, I believe. So welcome to our two guests. I talked to you earlier. We're really glad you're here. Hope to see you again. Treasurer, do we have any money? It's not. Oh, I need a new picture, I guess. Hi there. So we have in checking 35,018 and 62 cents. We have in savings 121, 862 and 91 cents. And the income for February was about $3,200. The expenses were about 4,100. That's mostly the spring seminar. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, we did just recently have a couple of events here. We had our, um, on Friday, March 17th, our advanced workshop with Tom Jones. We had 30 registered people. Unfortunately, a couple of them missed it, but we did have 28 very happy people who spent a, a really exciting afternoon with Tom and, and really learned some really fun stuff. That was followed then on the next day with our spring seminar on March 18th. We had 129 paid attendees for that. Uh, we did, as we frequently we always offer to the Dallas Public Library, we had one of uh, their members up there attend for free to kind of broaden their base of knowledge out. And just kind of fun fact, 71% of the attendees were DGS members, so members are supporting our activities and we do very much appreciate that. We'll have a full report next month. Uh, we haven't had a chance to crunch the numbers, to see the survey results and all that. And Kristen Moore, our uh, VP, is on vacation this week, but next month she'll give you a full readout on uh, some more details on what happened that, but it was a great event, had a lot of fun, and uh, hope to see you some future ones. Speaking of future ones, we have a great one coming up on August 4th and 5th, Lisa Louise Cook and Friends. She's bringing Sonny Morton and Diane Southern. It's a two-day event, uh, so for two days, one fee, you get three speakers. And these are really dynamic uh, speakers. If you've never had an opportunity to hear any of them, this is really going to be a great opportunity to spend some uh, up close and personal time with them right in this very room. And uh, we're still, oops, got this again ahead of me. We're still setting the pricing and some other details, but we'll be getting full information and registration out to you very soon. But mark your calendars. That's a Friday and Saturday event, again, August 4th and August 5th. And in the fall, on September 30th, we're having Josh Taylor come back, who will again be uh, featuring his wit, witticism, and charm, as he always does. So again, mark your calendar for September 30th for that event. I've talked at the past couple of meetings about different ways that you can support the DGS through social media. I just would kind of like to remind you of some things you can do. One of them is get a Facebook account and like us. Just click a button and follow the things that we do, and that kind of helps boost everything that we post. So it's a very simple way you can help support the organization. If you're uh, into shopping, either at groceries at Tom Thumb or Kroger, you can sign up there and designate 1% of your purchase at no cost to you, to us. Or if you uh, shop at Amazon, you can shop, sign up for Amazon Smile. And again, at no cost to you, half a percent of all your purchases will be designated to your favorite uh, nonprofit, and hopefully that is us. We're also launching another way to get some money from you, because we have a very exciting project that we are, are pushing and trying to raise funding for. As you're aware, we have published quarterlies and newsletters throughout our entire 60 plus year history. We have recently acquired a set of our quarterlies from March 50, 1955 all the way through 1994, a complete set of those documents, which so far are only available by going up on the eighth floor of the Dallas Public Library 
and some rather poor images that we have on our website. What we're trying to do is to raise $4,500. Susan, would you mind going into that bucket out in the hallway for him? We're trying to raise $4,500 because that's what it's going to cost us to have. Can I try raising this? Yell when you're trying to do Okay, so we are trying to raise $4,500. Did you hear that? <laughs> All right. And uh, that's what's going to cost us to digitize them and have them placed on the portal to Texas history. So you all probably saw this when you came in. And what I'm going to ask you all to do is to reach into your pockets. And you're kind of like the airlines at the end of a flight. If you have any loose change, uh, we'll, we'll even take, well, you don't get my, my flash drive. But if you would just pass this on around and drop something in there. We also can accept donations online. And so if you go to our Donate Now button, you will end up on this page. And there you can designate any money that you want for the digitized DGS quarterlies. And put in your credit card information, and we'll accept that. You can mail check. We'll take uh, used cars, used furniture. Well, maybe not that stuff. But the point is, we really would appreciate your support for this project to try to help us get to the point where we have enough money to get this stuff digitized. This is also going to be our featured focused event for the North Texas Giving Day in September of, of 2017. So again, mark your calendars for September 14th. We took part in this last year and raised $2,500, which the DGS matched with another $2,500, and raised more than $5,000 for the Portal to Texas History uh, Endowment Fund. And this, if you're not familiar with this event, it's pretty cool. I believe last year, somewhere around $23 million was donated to non-for-profit organizations through this one-day mechanism. And so they also have kind of this, uh, there's a little bonus pool. Companies and individuals would donate some extra money and uh, kind of above and beyond what any individual organization gets. And so at the end of the event, they kind of throw a little bonus money on top of it too. So it's really a great deal for organizations like us to participate in because we get some of that bonus money, we get a little publicity, we get an awful lot of good training and experience from them on how to run social media and things like that. So the North Texas Giving Day is fantastic. Us being part of it is even more fantastic because that's where you can kind of help push us over the top to, to get the funds that we need for, to, to digitize these books. So enough of that. We've got some volunteer projects that have been going on for a while now. We have probate records that we've been indexing, and we are 94% done. These are 3,100 records. We've had three people who have been exceptionally busy on this. Joe Conley, Karen Walker, and John Withers just in the last month did more than 200 records there. So we're down to the last two or 300 uh, records, and we are going to be done. Again, what we're doing is the images are already online. What our volunteers are doing is going through the images, figuring out what the, the earliest and the latest date for each case is, because that wasn't indexed. And we're also indexing the date of the death of the person, the, the deceased person who was the subject of the probate case. All of that's going into the metadata on the Portal to Texas History website, so that anybody who goes to the website to search these records is going to have just a little more information that they can research and that they can locate these records on. You can be part of it. We've got a wonderful online sign-up thing, which we're using for this and our other events. Uh, as you can see, these are the last 400 cases we have there. You just grab one of them, sign up, view the images, go to our website, type in the information, and grab another one. So your last chance. This is all there are, and there won't be any more. Our African American Special Interest Group has also been very busy working on the McGowan Funeral Home Indexing Project. This is a whole set of records that when the McGowan Funeral Home closed their doors for business, the Dallas Public Library acquired this whole set of, you can see them in the, in the back there, all of the records of all of the funerals that they had ever handled. And what this group is doing is they're going through each burial record and they are creating an online index of the information that is contained in each file. Um, we don't have an accurate count of how many records there are yet. Uh, but I thought there were 6,000, there may be as many as 10,000. It's a lot of them. But again, we've got a group of people who have been actively working on this. We've kind of upped the ante a bit by creating an online interface instead of the, the laptop PC they had been using. So the pace is picking up a bit now because more than one person can index these records at a time. Um, so that's helping speed it up. And again, you can see Billy Reed, Patricia Stigger, and Alvin Blakes have been busy just in the past month. That should be March, not April, my bad. The cool thing is with this new tool, as they're indexing the records, they're going right online immediately. And so we have an interface on our website, so you can go through and search these records literally the second that they have been keyed in. So as more records get added, there's more information in this database for you to search. And hopefully before too much longer, we're going to have all six or 10,000 or however many of them are online for you to search through. 
just a couple of ways that, again, as a society, we're trying to give back. So I'm now going to ask, I believe it's Kathleen Murray, are you going to come down and talk about our nominating committee? Because it is that time of year. Uh, we did form a nominating committee, and their charge was to go out and try to find a slate of officers, and a slate being one qualified candidate for each of the four positions that we'll be voting on next May. And I'll try to keep this thing under control for you. We didn't know we were supposed to do that. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, hello, good morning. Um, we have four candidates, but let me first tell you uh, who uh, helped us with the nominating committee. Uh, Susan Rainwater, our treasurer, current, last couple of years, she served as our chair. Carolyn Davis was on the committee, uh, current uh, publicity director. And uh, let's see, Bruce Moore was on the group. And I guess I need to, Susan Younger, who's usually right there, uh, was on the group, and then myself, Kathleen Murray. So we have uh, four people I want to introduce you. Uh, two of them are away and couldn't be with us today, but I'll start uh, with our treasurer. Uh, we have Travis Tyne, and he is here. He's in the back. Um, and Travis, I'll, I'll just tell you a little bit about him because uh, he's a new member uh, for us, and um, he's a retired bilingual uh, certified public accountant and chartered global management accountant. Uh, he has served in senior level financial positions uh, with multinational companies in Mexico, uh, Costa Rica, Brazil, Netherlands, and the United States. So um, his genealogical experience, he tells us, began when he was a boy, helping his mother search for grave markers in cemeteries. And as a young person, he assisted her by searching census records on microfilm readers in the local library. And as an adult, he served for three years as the president of the Northeast Louisiana Genealogical Society in Monroe, Louisiana. So he brings genealogical experience, society experience with him. Uh, even though the society was small, it published its finding, the findings of its members' research in a quarterly publication with about 250 uh, people subscribed to it. So um, there we go, a little bit about him. So Travis, we're very glad you're here uh, and that you volunteered to our solicitations. And then we'll go on to Secretary Carolyn Gay Simpson. Carolyn is sitting next to Travis, uh, they're taking care of each other a little bit here. And <laughs> many of you know Carolyn. She's uh, been around for quite some time. She's a native Dallasite. She uh, went to school in University Park. And after that, she uh, continued her education at Sullins College in Bristol, Virginia. Uh, she received an associate's degree in equitation. Do I have that correct? I do not. <laughs> Horseback riding. <laughs> well, that explains a few things. Uh, <laughs> apparently, um, that's the. <laughs> you're here to tell the tale. I'm. Uh, she uh, married uh, someone who uh, was in the U.S. Army officer, and she uh, stayed with him for four years and then realized she uh, would really rather be coming back to Texas and doing something else. And so she finished her bachelor's degree in theater and television production. They only did shows about horses, I understand. <laughs> okay, but uh, she uh, became, as she, she was back here in Dallas, she uh, got involved with a group of friends who wanted to start a new Episcopal church, and she was one of the founding members. She served on their board of trustees, sang in their choir, worked with the altar guild, and she spent a long time doing that and also remarried. Uh, she'll be married 13 years in January. She told us that, so I will tell you that. Um, um, she became interested in genealogy when she was cleaning out her parents' home in University Park, uh, and found a pedigree chart of her father's with lots of other data. And she, with, she attended uh, Don Rainey's classes and at Richmond College and filled out that pedigree chart. And she's learned a lot about herself, obviously, we all do in the process. And she feels uh, a special kinship to the Dallas Genealogical Society because one of uh, her great aunts was a founder of this organization. What was that great aunt's name? Her name was Willie Flowers Carla. All right. Okay, there we go. Kelvin is nodding his head. Yes. Oh, okay. Wow. 
All right, so thank you, Carolyn and Travis, very much for volunteering. And then uh, our vice president is known to you all. Uh, it's uh, Kristen Moore. She's been serving as vice president for the last year, and she's going to continue to do so. Uh, if you don't know, I'll just tell you just a tad bit about her. She's a fifth-generation Texan uh, from Houston. She had her MBA from UTA and her uh, bachelor's degree at Princeton University. Uh, she worked for IBM for 19 years and at Broadbridge for 11 years. She uh, currently performs uh, with the Arts District Chorale in Dallas and also provides IT support for that organization. She is a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution, the Daughters of the Republic of Texas, uh, and the Daughters of Union Veterans of the Civil War. Uh, she said she could probably be a daughter or a member of other organizations <laughs> because of that pedigree if she chose to, but three is enough for now. Um, She's very pleased to be running for another year. So we thank Kristen for being here and for volunteering again. And for president, we have Todd Decker. And many of you will at least have seen or heard or known the name of Todd Decker. Um, he tells us that he's uh, running for president of the society. He got started with our society in 2006, attending meetings and gatherings. A few years ago, he was asked to help with the website. And the following year, he became a webmaster for the DGS, and he currently holds that position, as well as um, being director of volunteers. I, uh, is that correct, volunteers, yeah. that was it called? Um, he's been active on the board since that time. He grows his knowledge about you know, what's happening in the board and the society. He's been president of many nonprofit school-related organizations, the PTA, PTSA, Band Boosters, as well as serving on several district-level committees. Uh, they've ranged from small groups to very large groups, and over the last eight years, uh, leading organizations, he's learned that to be successful, you need to have clear goals, great engagement, strong communication, accountability, all mixed with having some fun. So I, I, I think those themes are, are pretty good guiding principles for our organization. I expect to be invited to uh, be more engaged and have more fun uh, with Todd coming along. Um, if given the opportunity to serve, he says he will continue the efforts of the board to focus on our core talents, education, support of genealogy section in the library, and collecting and preserving records and information relating to Dallas area. Um, it requires continued growth of society and even more societal engagement. Uh, he looks forward to the opportunity to serving everybody. So that was a long-winded event, uh, but I wanted you to know who these people are so that they're real to you, and uh, I'm not sure that most of us uh, know them that well. And this information is also on a web page uh, that'll come live. So uh, we're going to have the vote at the next election. And please show up and bring anybody you know. Uh, the date <laughs> is May 6th. Uh, it's a Saturday. It's the last meeting uh, of this fiscal year, general meeting. And uh, it'll be um, probably you know, kind of fun to see a whole lot of people come to that and really show some support for these people who have volunteered. So I appreciate that. And, uh, Susan wanted to speak, but we're out of time now. <laughs> Ready? Uh, I will applaud also. Thank you very much for uh, coming up with an excellent slate of officers. I'm really excited about the future of our society with uh, such a skilled and dedicated group of leaders. We have some special interest group meetings coming up. I just want to make note that the Roots Magic has had a couple of date changes, as you can see, and is now meeting on April 30th. Uh, all of these are well documented on the website, and hopefully you will be able to participate in at least one of these things. I want to put particular focus on the Brown Bag group, a uh, uh, group run by Liz Coots. They meet on the fourth Saturday of each month at 1030, so their next meeting is Saturday, April 22nd. And they meet right here in the library on the eighth floor of the McDermott Room. And they're currently exploring issues, exploring the uses and impact of the law in family history to solve research problems relating to women and the family unit. And they're researching this basically based on the book by Mary, uh, Marilyn Salmon called Woman and the Law of Property in Early America. So that's kind of how this group works. They, they pick typically textbooks like this and just kind of dive deep and research some of the issues and the things behind it. And would just encourage you to support this and, and any of the other groups because they're, they're all really, in their own way, very special and very unique. 
Just looking ahead to our next meeting where we will be having an election, so hopefully you will all be here, but our speaker at that Saturday is, is also seated in the corner of the room. Ari Wilkins is uh, gaining quite a reputation as a speaker. She works for the Dallas Public Library up in the genealogy section. You've heard her at uh, FGS. You're going to hear her at the NGS, and you're going to get a great opportunity to hear her right here next month. So I would encourage you to attend the meeting, listen to what Ari has to say, and help support our new board of directors. So I hope to see you here on May 6th. I also want to point out that for uh, the past several meetings and for the next upcoming meeting, we do put meeting minutes and recordings of the meetings online. And uh, just a little pre-emphasis for Kelvin Meyer, our upcoming speaker, he's graciously agreed to allow us to record him and is going to let us put his presentation online for two weeks following this meeting. So you're all going to have heard it already, that's old hat, but you know, we've got 426 members and not everybody gets an opportunity to come down here. And so it's just a very gracious and, and a wonderful thing that Kelvin is allowing us to do, to reach out and uh, to bring the great presentations we have here to those that aren't able to actually attend the meeting. So Kelvin, thank you very much for that. So to get, just to get to that, you can just go to our events, general meetings, and then in the meeting minutes, and you'll always see all of the information we have about our most current meetings up there. And again, the handout's currently there, will be for a couple weeks. The presentation, as soon as I get it processed, will be, as well as the recording of this too. So, hi me. I always wanted to do that. And with that, um, we're, we're going to have a feedback link on the website as well, so we, very, we always value your feedback. You can just talk to any of us anytime, but this is an opportunity to give us some anonymous feedback and say, great job, awful job, whatever. We would love to hear from you, what, you know, whatever opinion you have about this meeting and what we can do to make it better. So, so please take that. And with that, I'm going to ask Lisa Ross to come up here and introduce Kelvin to us. Logical Society. If you're already a member, thank you. Your membership dues are supporting this and other society activities. If you're not yet a member, I hope you consider joining. You can become a member for as little as $35 a year, and you can join by going to our website, dallasgenealogy.org, and clicking on the Membership tab. 